great. All right. So uh, uh, let me get started with the uh, um, again with the introduction. Um, Sabina is at um, IN, INAF in Palermo, I believe, and uh, she is our speaker today. I'll be hosting uh, our presentation. Um, and the agenda for it is that uh, in the beginning, if uh, you have not logged in to the um, data cloud, please um, go ahead and and uh, and do that. Uh, I hope that all of you who are on the call today already have been uh, already instructed and have gone through the step of uh, of this new new version of our new new uh, procedure for getting into the uh, um, to the uh, uh, Ruben Science platform. Uh, Melissa, do you have any other announcements? Um, remember, we talked about announcing the VSS and giving the PCW web page. Do you have slides for those? Uh, no, I don't have slides for PCW, uh, but uh, print, uh, Project Community Workshop will take place this year, again, as it usually does during the second week of August. So I believe it's something like 6th or 7th through 13th of August, and all of you are, um, are uh, of course, invited and welcome to join in to, for this. Um, for the uh, virtual summer school, uh, we have an, a link to the uh, um, um, to the website for that. For that, that's going to be June 12 through 16, 2023. And again, everybody's welcome. And if you have any students, especially who are interested in sort of getting started on uh, on uh, um, data previews, uh, that is a really great opportunity. Uh, so, anything else, Melissa, that I'm missing here? I don't think so. No, great. Okay, so the plan today is, as we usually do it for the, especially for the uh, um, contributed presentations, is to have the uh, um, first hour devoted to the uh, uh, main presentation. And again, the directory is the uh, um, delegate contributions uh, DP0, uh, DP02, which is what you have on your screen. If you wish, I can put it into the chat. Presumably, you all have it available. So. Uh, um, so uh, that's that's what you should go on to. And then at uh, um, 10 o'clock, we're going to switch gears and we're going to go to breakouts. And again, we can uh, have a one slot specifically set aside for new delegates for meet and greet. Um, and then um, we can have potentially one for variability and transients. And I suspect that that might be a good one for uh, you to, if you have any sort of detailed questions uh, having to do with Sabina's presentation, maybe that's a good one to go to. Uh, we typically have one for large-scale large, large scale structure and maybe for synthetic source in, injection. Uh, and if there is anything else you'd like to suggest, do let me know. But for the time being, I think that uh, um, the only one I can think of is the, uh, uh, the basically the follow-up on, on Sabina's presentation. So let me go to the next slide. And for the future delegate assemblies, we have uh, one on schedule for the 28th of April, which is two weeks from today, um, and that would be actually a, a, a double header with Dan Richanowski uh, talking about Lenster explosive transients with DP0.2, and one from Antonio um, Vanzanella, whom topic I have not seen yet, but uh, again, please do watch the, uh, um, the usual uh, um, delegate uh, information for, for that. Um, so um, now for those of you who don't remember how to uh, download the uh, um, uh, notebook file, um, it's a slide that you can probably see on your screen. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, easy thing to do is to basically download the uh, one, but it's this what we have on the screen is something that really has to do with the standard tutorial notebooks. Again, you have to go to the uh, delegate contributions, which is in the same Ruben DP0 um, uh, area. Uh, so if you, uh, I should say maybe that the standard way to do this is the, 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 the presentation on this slide that you can see right now, and um, the, you can download this file, this file directly. Uh, so uh, maybe I should stop here and ask if anybody has any questions, anything that is not clear. Again, you can either raise your hand, I can see a chat window here, and there's uh, um, Jeff's um, uh, DP0 Virtual Summer School website is actually one uh, listed in the chat if you wanted to take a look at it. Again, Jeff is uh, one of the co-organizers of the school, so he might be a good person if you want to ask any, any questions of him. All right, uh, so, and Melissa also, thank you. She, point, she, she uh, posted the link to the uh, 
project community workshop, uh, which is happening in August uh, 2023. All right, anything else? Do you want to add anything, Melissa, or am I? Uh, actually nope, just, nope, nothing new to add. Okay, great. Okay, and this stop, at this point, maybe I should stop sharing and I will start recording. I guess I started recording already and I will hand it over to Sabina. So go ahead, Sabina, please take it away. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll share my screen. So everybody probably at this point should start uh, um, their own notebook and try to follow in uh, um, in uh, along with with Sabina's presentation. Yeah, as I I will just uh, start with uh, uh, some uh, quick, uh, very quick presentation. Just in order to explain the method I'm I'm uh, applying, uh, I implemented it in the notebook. Uh, so it just it will be five minutes. Okay. So I'm trying to, to put the, the full, ah, okay, here, sorry for that. So uh, I just wanted to, to, to make a very, very quick introduction. So the, the, the notebook I, I'm presenting here implements a method we, uh, we develop it in the, in the context of, uh, of my Kickstarter uh, grant, which the, the PIs were um, Sara Bonito and Laura Venuti. And I've been working the last year in, in, in this topic. So uh, the, the, the title is Young Stellar Objects and the Variability with Ruby and SST. So combining observations and 3D models for a more inclusive science. So the, um, the, 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 the work we have been doing was separated in two parts. On, on, on one part, I have been developing 3D models, which, which I have been uh, talking before also in, uh, in, in, uh, in some seminars. Uh, but uh, today I want to, to talk about the first part, which, which uh, you see here, which is uh, in order to investigate the, the variability in young stellar objects at different time scales, we have been analyzing uh, different light like, curves from uh, public data sets uh, in preparation for Rubin SST data. So um, the, the method I'm presenting here, the, the, the structure functions analysis is the method we, we are applying. And uh, just, uh, just quickly, uh, we, we, we have been using uh, mainly uh, two, two kinds of, of, of data. Which uh, where we have uh, short uh, short term data uh, with variability in hours from days and also long term data in, with variability from months to years, and uh, we try to the, the best situation for us in order to apply the method correctly is to have homogeneous da data that um, that are uh, distributed uh, along all the time, um, and um, this this method we uh, ca can can give us some insights on the variety uh, on the variety of physical processes across the dot time domain that that can produce the variability we're observing the light course. So, um, which is useful here is that uh, you can have a method that you can apply automatically to a lot of light course, and um, and you can uh, extract some um, statistical parameters that can that can give you some insights of which kind of stars are you looking to, and and uh, which kind of variable, which is the typical variability of the star you are looking to. Uh, so we we apply this method to to to, to some some XOR objects that uh, some of our collaborators Teresa Giannini and Alessio Junta provided. And uh, and also to uh, to to to, our, to our, um, a big number of data, we we had uh, uh, seven hundred and fifty objects from N NAGG twenty twenty two sixty four that uh, that uh, were provided by Laura Venuti, and we applied the structure function uh, method. Which uh, which mainly consists uh, it's it's a method that, have, that had been developed before, like uh, in the in the nineteen eighty five, 
uh, but it has been more recently implemented uh, to young to the study of young stellar reduced variability and uh, it has been uh, applied by recently by Laura Venuti to to study young stellar objects uh, so mainly which is implemented in a notebook is what you are seeing here so the the, the method which which, which we, we consists on calculating the the average uh, uh, variability amplitude uh, me measured in the in the light curve you are studying uh, for different in function of the on the time you have so uh, the 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 steps you have to do to to apply the method is to to identify uh, the the range of uh, on the of investigated time so so you have a tau min and tau max uh, that that are the the, the characteristic time, times you are studying and you you need to to divide uh, the all the the time domain in uh, into logarithmically spaced uh, uh, time scale bins and then for each bin uh, of your uh, your uh, of, of your division what uh, you have to do is is to select all the pair, all the pairs of light curve uh, epochs, which difference between this um, uh, these points in the light curve are uh, inside the the time bin that you are studying at that time so you go along all the time beans doing this operation and it, in each bin when you are when you have selected all the points that are um, that the, the difference in time are inside you calculate um, uh, some kind of average difference in in fluxes so which is the structure function you see here which depends on the on the time bin you are making your calculation and you make the differences in fluxes of 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 all the of, of all the points inside that selected in that bin and you divide between the total number of of, of points so this is mainly the, the 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 idea of what what is implemented in the in the method that is implemented in the notebook which here i'm applying to variable star but it has it can be applied also to 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 study variability of other type of objects and uh, what we are expecting uh, to, to to obtain from this method, so we we put in input uh, like a, a a light curve, and uh, what we obtain is the structure function, which theoretically has um, the shape that you can uh, observe here in these two figures. So uh, may, in general, it's divided in 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 three different regions with with where in the first region we we have the uh, in general uh, uh, a line that that more or less like uh, it's 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 parallel and and you you have flux variations which are in general dominated by photometric uncertainties and uh, then there is a uh, the second region which in general is a power law with uh, with a gradient um that uh, reflects the, the the nature of the observed variability, and in the third region, uh, you again have a flat uh, uh, sector function in general, which is slowly varying the, around the maximum value. So the the values that you can extract from, especially from this transition, so from the transition and in, in the power law. Uh, can uh, give you information about, uh, in general, all the light curve can give you information about the typical variability time, but these points in general, the statistical points that you you, you find it is in this uh, region, um, can give you uh, information about the intrinsic characteristic variability and the origin of the observed variability. Uh, so, these are these are just uh, a, a, a couple of examples that you will see also in the notebook. So uh, on the top you see the light curves, and on the uh, down you can see the, the the result of the structure function. And this is more or less the shape that uh, that 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 it has for young stellar objects. And this is another ex another two examples. So. Uh, the, the, this, this, uh, these examples, I will also, also show um, two of our examples. So one XOR and uh, and uh, one uh, one young stellar object. Uh, but uh, I I will apply also the method to um, to the catalogs uh, to the DP02 catalogs. So now I will go to the notebook. 
So I will close this one. Um, okay. Hopefully everyone is uh, is following, is able to follow the, the notebook. If uh, if there is any problem like uh, downloading the notebook or something, like, just let me know, and I can wait a little bit. Um, I will go through the notebook, uh, running all the cells, and 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 I will explain a little bit uh, what 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 it has been done here. Um, also, uh, if if you have any questions, you you can just uh, stop me and 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 ask just to. You, you don't need to wait to the end of the presentation. Um, if uh, also uh, hope that uh, that you can see correctly my my screen. If you need to to make it bigger or something, just just let me know. Um, so the title of the of my notebook maybe, is maybe if it could be just a little bigger, maybe one zoom in. Mm -hmm. Sorry, um, I don't know it's working. Ah, okay, now, now what? Even more. I didn't notice the change. No, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah, that looks a little better for me on a laptop screen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so the the in in this notebook, I I investigate the variable stars in 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 the GPT two catalog. So what I have done here is to use uh, catalog data to to identify variable stars, uh, plot their light curves, and calculate their their structure functions, which is the the method I br briefly introduced you in in these slides. And uh, then for comparison, just at the end of the notebook, I I also applied the method to to two uh, specific examples of young stellar objects that that we have studied. Um, the, the data products I'm using uh, are different tables, like the object table, the 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 the, the true tables, the CCD visit in order to to get the the times, and also the difference image analysis uh, tables. Uh, I. I, I will present later the, uh, we don't need a lot of packages. There is this particular package, which is Numba, which I will uh, explain uh, uh, later. And uh, I, I just I just wanted to, uh, would like to acknowledge the, the, the use of the, of the of different tutorial notebooks for, for this, uh, for, for, for what I have developed here, because, a lot of the work I have implemented here is based in part on, on, on the material that uh, some of you have developed, in particular Jeff, Melissa, and Ryan. I have been um, I have been following to, it was very useful for me the the, the seven B and and, and eight uh, uh, tutorial notebooks in particular. And I will also uh, would like to uh, to. To, to thank especially Laura Venuti and Sara Bonito as part of the team and for their support in the in the analysis of the data here. Uh, so, how is the the structure of the of of the notebook here? Is divided in the, the the first section. I I I I, I give a little uh, a short introduction and the, the I do the packaging reports and and define the, uh, all my variables. And uh, and then in the second section, uh, which uh, is the section which is, which is uh, the one with, where the, I describe all the um, all the selection done in the in the DP02 catalogs. So I I perform all the selection of the of the objects I'm then using to 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 make the sector functions analysis. In the section three, I apply, I I define the, the, the functions used to, to, to make the, the calculations. And, uh, and then I, I I apply the the, the, the method to, to to the selected <laughs> objects from the catalogs. And, and finally also I also read uh, some uh, a couple of, of external like curves of young stellar objects and, and I also apply the method in order to, to compare with the with the results obtained here. Um, okay, so I will go running the, the cells. So these are the, the, the package imports we, we use. They are the general package that, that we usually use and also the, the, 
the GitHub service uh, for, uh, package with which we need for uh, for the tab queries we are using here, and for the structure panzer calculations, the packages we are using, I'm uh, I'm using pandas because I'm saving all the data as, uh, as pandas data frame, and this is the package I I told you before Numba, which. Uh, 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 it's quite interesting to accelerate your calculations because um, you you can uh, use it in order to precompile uh, part of the of, of your code and uh, it, it it runs uh, much more faster and especially it, it can be very useful when you have um, um, to, when you have to do calculations as the as the one I'm doing here where. I have to apply the same calculation for uh, for a lot of uh, sources and in an in an if uh, in an if loop in a in a for loop, excuse me. Um, so you will see how it's applied uh, later, but it's very simple to use and uh, and I I suggest you to check if you're interested because it it, it really can accelerate your work like uh, save you out fifty percent of your calculation time. <laughs> Um, so, okay, then I define the, the, the functions and, and parameters here. So I'm using uh, the, the same uh, filters and uh, symbols and colors that have been used in, in the Dark Energy Survey publication and in most of the tutorial notebooks, just to be coherent with the, with the, the, the rest of the material we have uh, here in the platform. And uh, which I added here is uh, I added these lines uh, where you can see that I added more filters and more symbols and colors. And this is just uh, because in, in one of the objects I'm importing at the end, um, there are, uh, it is an XOR object and there are different uh, uh, the filters which they don't have exact correspondence with, uh, with, with the filters we have in Rubin. So, uh, I just added them separately just to, to not mix everything um, everything together. Um, now I here I call uh, the the tab service to uh, which will be used to to all the data retrieval in in, in this notebook. So now in um, here in the second section, which uh, which I start uh, identifying the the candidate variable stars uh, from the catalog, which we I will use in the next section for to do the the calculation of the starter functions. The here I'm using the difference image uh, analysis products, uh, which are the, the most appropriate sources, uh, the most appropriate uh, uh, tables in order to to search for uh, for variable objects. Um, in order to get more information about that, you can also check the 7B tutorial notebook, which there is a lot of explanation and also a comparison about using uh, different uh, different tables for, for this purpose. Um, I'm using here the, the these three um, <laughs> different some, uh, image analysis um, uh, tables. And uh, what uh, what I do to to start is uh, to design a query, uh, joining together the the, the dimension image analysis object and the force source uh, on on the object to to retrieve the the candidates and the and the the candidates to variable stars and the and the photometry. So what I'm doing here is uh, I. Um, I designed an, a, a very simple criteria to to select the, the the variable stars, which which is for the to to select the variable candidates. So for the beginning, I only only take that uh, the scattering uh, measure process is larger than the 50 per, uh, 15 percent uh, relative to the mean, and um, I select uh, data that has at least uh, 60 observations, uh, just in order to have enough data to, to apply my, my method. But I have, uh, th this is one possible selection. Of course, I have tried with different values and uh, also with different filters, because here I'm using the data from, from all the filters, but I just 
uh, selected use the 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 G band for the for the selection, but I also tried also using uh, other filters and doesn't change uh, uh, so much. Um, it changes uh, mainly if you change these values. You can change. You can try to change in these values. It it, it uh, more or less. Uh, the main difference is that uh, you get more or less data depending on the values you are using. Here I, I I selected these values just to have a reasonable amount of data, which I wanted like to have between ten and, and twenty sources to to apply my method. But you you can get uh, you can try with different selections. And um, I will run, start to run the query just because I forgot because it's, it, it can be a little bit to, to run. Usually not so much as you can see here before for me it was like uh, 17 seconds. So usually it's not long, but hope it's going to work correctly. Okay. Um, it already finished. So uh, in the in the query here, I I I, I run now. Uh, what you can see it's in the first part. I'm selecting the 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 variables uh, I'm uh, I I need to to extract from the tables. Then what I'm doing here is in the second part to to join uh, the different tables. In particular, here I'm joining uh, the, the the object and forces on the object because I want to extract the the force photometry from from here. And in the object, I have uh, all the summary of the parameters I'm using here to 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 make the selection. So I need both of them. You you can see here that I'm using the object table for this one while. Uh, here I'm extracting my, uh, my my magnitudes from from the force source table, and I'm also joining the CCD uh, visit table because uh, I need to get the, also the time for each visit in order to 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 get the the, the light curves. So what I uh, okay here you can also uncomment uh, sources if if you want to see how it looks. So here you, you find all the object identities uh, found. And uh, you are, here you have all the, on the columns, all the all the data I wanted to extract. I will comment again because I don't need this one now. Um, so the total uh, number of measurements and uh, uh, that we have here are uh, more more than seven that, that than six thousand, and uh, the number of unique sources uh, object identity we have it's fourteen objects, which it's uh, it's a good number for me. So I uh, this is why more or less I, I selected those numbers, and uh, the. The two cells you 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 can see um, here are just uh, um, some backup cells, just in case the things weren't working. Because I I have been experiencing uh, the last uh, week, and especially the last two days, um, a lot of um, problems uh, running my queries, which I already told to 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 Greg. And um, and in some cases, without changing anything, without changing the pipeline, with just with the same uh, with the same status, uh, the same query that would run like here in in eighteen seconds, that it it will be like running for uh, also half an hour, and at the end I, I couldn't get a result. So just in case, if you sometimes you are working with um, with long queries, which wasn't this one, but uh, uh, even longer queries, uh, you can. I, I use this one to to save my my data my data as a as a panda data frame. So in order to to have the result of my query and I can use it even without running at the time. So, but fortunately, we don't need it now. Uh, so what what I will do in in this next uh, subsection the two point two is uh, to take these 14 uh, candidates that uh, that I have for variable stars, and I will uh, query the, the truth tables in order to check if uh, the retrieved candidates are variable stars. So 
what what I'm doing is um, to I will run this one while I'm talking with you. Um, what I do is to to take all the object identities, the fourteen object identities I I got in the in the in the previous uh, step, and I will go one by one in this uh, uh, fourth uh, cycle, and uh, and I will select the position and and. Uh, of, of each one of these objects, and I I will search um, the position uh, of the object in the in, in the object table in order to to get the the object identity in the object uh, in in the object table because what what I have here is is uh, uh, the the difference image analysis uh, object table and I want to get uh, the identity of the object in 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 the object table because it's matched with uh, the the truth tables in order to 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 then use this um this object identity for uh, to to get the uh, the 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 parameters i'm interested in in the in the truth tables so what mainly what i'm doing here is to get the variables i need so and then i um I match uh, here the different tables, so I, I get the, the match through the, the truth summary, and I and I match uh, the, the identity truth type in the in the in the both table in both tables, and I find also the the, the object identity. Uh, here is the condition at, at the at the end of the query. This is the condition to to, to find uh, your uh, your object. So. Here in in uh, raw cell and Excel are the the position of the of the selected objects. So I go by one by one, searching this this position. And as as it's explained here, I use the the position and I I specify a very small area to to search in order to retrieve only my object of interest. Then with that object of interest, I I get the the information in the in the truth tables which in particular i'm interested in in in, in having the 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 true type parameters and the and which defines if it's a, a star and um, and the parameters that define also if it's variable of and, and if it's a point source uh, uh, object um here i'm creating for this one a a, a new resulting uh, data frame um in order to have this this new new data so i'm creating a this new new data frame and then i'm concatenating uh, the 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 new result of this query in in every step inside the the fourth cycle and uh, at the end what i get this what is printed here are the object identities and here with what, what i get uh, it's uh, a view of the results table where you can find the the the, the coordinates of the of the object, the, the identity, and uh, these are the the mainly the the most interesting parameters for me, which are the true type of is variable and point source source. Uh, this the one means that it's variable. This means that it's a point source, and this means the the, the two means that it's a star. So um, it looks good because all the 14 candidates that I, I have, I, I got in the previous step, are classified as variable stars and, and point sources. So after this, uh, after this check, there is also the, the uncommented cells, which are the same cells, uh, analogous cells, uh, similar cells to the, to the ones I, I showed you before. In order to to be able to to save the uh, your your panda data frames uh, locally uh, and read it later the, to use your data, but uh, here are just uncommented. We don't need them now. Um, once I know that, as I was telling, once I know that that the, the fourteen sources are uh, are classified as variable size, I will use them. Um, in order to go, uh, for the next se section to to make the starter functions analysis, here I I, I create um, a new uh, data frame 
just selecting only the, the, the values I need for my analysis, which mainly are the object identity and the, uh, in order to know which, which object I'm, I'm studying. And uh, then the, the epoch and the magnitude to know the times and the, and the, uh, and, and, and to get the fluxes for the, uh, for the calculations and then the, the filter, because uh, I will do the calculations for each filter separately. Um, so we we go to the next to the next section, which uh, where I uh, uh, which is the core of the of the calculations, where where I define the the structure function analysis. So in the first uh, subsection, what I what I did is to define the um, the functions implemented for the structure functions analysis, and they are there are three functions here which are um, data summary, which uh, gives a summary of the, of the data used for the analysis. So I run it at the, at the beginning just to see which kind of data I, I, I have uh, to analyze. There is the, the calc uh, SF, uh, which calculates uh, the structure function is itself. And then there is the SF analysis, which um, make uh, performs all the structure function analysis, uh, doing a, a check of the data, uh, then calculates the structure function also using the, the calc uh, the calc SF uh, function I, uh, you, you have there, and uh, then, uh, then plotting the results also. Uh, so why I define them as, as functions is uh, because uh, in, it, it's much 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 easier to to apply to different kind of groups of data. As here I'm using different uh, different kind of data, I I will apply the same function for for the different uh, for the for the different groups of data. So here I we define the function. So just run here. Uh, I will just explain briefly. So here, in data summary, you just we just checked which which kind of objects we have in the data frame. We plot a list of unique object identities just to see which objects we have. We 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 also um, plot the fi the filters we we can find because not in all in all the in all the data we are we are studying here. We have the the same filters and also for, for some objects we don't have the information for our filters. And uh, and we plot the it plots also the number of data that uh, that you have in each filter. So also to see how many points you have and which is the distribution. And the second uh, function here is the uh, calculate uh, is to calculate the structure function. Um, so. So here in this uh, in this function is where I use um, he, he, here uh, here it's the, the the here is done the, the all the binning of the of the of the time as I explained before and uh, and is divided in 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 logarithmically uh, separated uh, beans and then is is done all the calculation as I explained before so searching all the points in the like curve. And uh, finding the 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 couples of, of points that are uh, the differences in time are inside an edge bin, and then calculating the, the the mean here. So this is the it it returns uh, as 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 um, as output. It returns the tau one and, and tau two, which are the the, the different uh, bins the structure function and n which is the number of points that it finds in each bin of the during the calculation uh, in this in in this function is where i use the the numba package so here you can say that the numba package is defined in this way in this way just you need to put it before the function and um, uh, it's, it's defined with a decorator and uh, just if you don't, if you don't want to use it, and also, and also, if you want to use it for your, for, for, for to, to test it for other functions, you just can comment this line, and see how the time changes in your calculations. For example, I have seen that, that in my case, I I save like more or less the forty percent of the of the time, which for me, when I'm doing a, 
a long analysis using a lot of uh, a big uh, database it's 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 very useful okay so this is defined uh, and then the the last function we have here is the structure function analysis so this also contains a call to the to to, to this function to so the to the function to calculate the structure function but adds new add uh, new things so the input here for to do all the analysis of the structure function that we need is the data frame so the 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 the, 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 the data with all the um, with the light curves that we are using and uh, this is the end step which um, which is the number of of steps you are dividing the the, the number of bins you have uh, in your in your data and the uh, end mean um, and mean it's not for the calculations it's just for the plots because um, uh, an important parameter also is that it's the the end parameter which is the the, the number of of uh, of points that you find find in each bin to calculate the mean so uh, sometimes i discard the the I, I decided to discard the the points in the structure function that that have very low n because I mean if I have a point that for the mean it's it's only it has only used one or two points it's it's not very meaningful. Uh, of course, all these values I I here defined the uh, the default values so for n step two hundred that for n mean ten. Uh, but uh, so if you don't write these parameters, it, it, it will assume that these are the values, but you can uh, check different values because depending on the data, uh, th these values uh, can change and you, you, can, you can have uh, better results. Uh, so, so in every case, we, we need uh, some testing to, to find the right values, especially for the end step. So here at the beginning, uh, which I de which I defined is I go object back to object doing the calculations in 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 this fourth cycle, and also and also in each object filter by filter I do cal the calculations. So separately for all the filters in order to see how the results change depending on the filter. Um, I start uh, defining the 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 size of the figures. See if are too big for you, you you can just. Uh, uh, change these these values here. If you want to make them, uh, if you want to change the size, um, then uh, this this is the the, the first checking before uh, before calling all this part in filters before calling the the structure function, uh, the calculation of the structure function. What we check is uh, if there are some some points here. If there are duplicates, if 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 uh, all the fluxes are greater than zero, um, some checks to see if there are some strange data that that will have to that that will be better to exclude. Um, then uh, also iteratively, we we select only the data with uh, with flux with flux with, with within uh, five sigma. This is to see if we have some outliers. So in a, in each case, we we check for all the data if there are data that are out five are out for five sigma. And in that case, we 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 decide to to we exclude this this data. Of course, this is something that we choose to 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 do. But uh, you you can decide to change this value depending on the kind of data you you have. And um, in this case, uh, there are only few points in in all the considering all the the objects uh, I have selected that that have uh, some point excluded and and in each case it's like one point excluded so it's not very important for the for the calculations. Um, you can uncomment if you want to to check the the results. You can also uncomment these these lines, uh, which in order to have uh, printed the excluded points. Um then uh, here I define the, the, the minimum and, and the maximum tau I'm considering. 
So typically the, the minimum time is, is the considered is the minimum difference between the points you have in your data. Uh, and the maximum uh, it's typically uh, the, the it's it's the the half of the value of the difference in time between the, ma the maximum points. Um, but which is defined here, so it's 0 .0 0 0.0.5 uh, per uh, the maximum difference in, in time, so half of the time, which is in general reasonable, but again, this, this can be customized. And then in this line is where I call the, 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 <laughs> the structure function to, to calculate the, the data. To, to, uh, the, the structure function function to calculate the structure function data. And um, here are the input uh, values that are defined all here. And uh, as output, we, we will have uh, these values that, that we will use to, to make the plots. So here, in order to, to have all together, I, I plot, I'm plotting um, the light curve, which is the input uh, we are using uh, in, in each case to, to make the calculations. And for the output, I'm I'm calculating the I, I'm I'm plotting the, the structure function. And uh, once this was this was only for the definition of the functions. Now in this uh, in the next subsection, we are we are applying this to the to the variable stars uh, selected. And um, <clears throat> we start applying it to the to the to the star selected uh, from the DP02 catalog, which which were uh, uh, were selected in the in the section two, and uh, we start like doing the data summary in order to see how our data looks like, and we have the object list, which are fourteen objects, and uh, we have the different filters uh, and the number of uh, of uh, VCs we have in each in each of the filters. In some cases, we have, especially in you, we have uh, less points. But yeah, uh, uh, of course, these are not probably not enough. But uh, I'm just applying uh, in order to 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 see as exercise the, the results from this one. And um, now I apply the the structure function analysis to this catalog df uh here i'm using as we don't have much points i'm using a lower uh, beaming for for the data and i also i'm also using a, a a low value for for n mean for the plots in order to to see all the results but you can play with these values and you will see that you obtain a long output which here you have a print of the summary of the of of, of the calculations so the mean in every in every case and, and and different information for the for the values and after all these ones which you can also decide to to not plot everything i i i just wanted to to show you uh, what you have is uh, for all the the data uh, for each one of the objects, which is specified here on the top, uh, you have first the light curve, which you observe here, where you, in fact, can say that you can see that you have variability in 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 some filters, while in other filters it seems quite uh, flat. And this is the result of the structure function. So, what we see here is. Uh, in this axis, we see in this uh, we see tau one, which is the 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 the, the values of, of our binning. Our binning was tau one and tau two, so I I took the first value. I, you can also choose for the plus and the medium value, for example, but it doesn't change very much. And um, for each one of these times, what you plot is the the corresponding point for the structure function, which gives you um the the average uh, variability for this time so you can check for all these variability times how uh, how is how which is your characteristic variability um here we don't have uh, a lot of points so the um, and and because uh, the um, in order to, to, to see the how the the, 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 the structure function is uh, the shape of the structure function I have shown you theoretically uh, theoretically before, 
uh, you need um, to have uh, a big number of points, I would say, and also a good distribution of the points. So if you have uh, like all the points in, 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 in one area, for example, and then you don't, you are missing points in other areas, it's more difficult to have uh, the, the, the complete structure function. We here can see a little bit the tendency. So the, the first points, and we see also that uh, the, the, the variability is quite different depending on, 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 your, on your filters, which we also could, could see here. But of course, uh, this is not uh, giving so much uh, information only for one, but uh, but in, in general, it's an analysis that that that, that goes performed in 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 a big uh, uh, in, in a big amount of, of of data with like curves, and it can give you information from from a huge uh, from a huge amount of data. Uh, if you then study the statistical parameters that you can have as an output from from these structure functions. Sabina, there's a question from uh, uh, from Ryan. He says, I'm curious why some of the structure function outputs show multiple results for some bands. Is that what you meant, uh, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I, th I think I might understand now, though. I think there's some um, signal to noise uh, cut that's being applied, and maybe that's why there's multiple like Z-band outputs in some of the, the SF outputs. Ah, uh, you mean... Uh... Ah, you mean ah the outputs you hear? Mm, yep, yep. Ah, yes, because if you if you are excluding some of points, uh, it recurrently uh, applies uh, again the the selection. So if if you are selecting the the points and one point is excluded, it applies again the recurrently to see if there are uh, if there are other points that that are outside of the five sigma, in general. It's a recurrent uh, calculation, but. Uh, I thought that I that I did the plot only once for each uh, for each one, uh, but uh, ah, you mean this oh, one? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you see that you, you do the clipping, the your selection of the points, and uh, here you have count uh, sixty, and then you have 50, 59, and then you you start again there with fifty nine, and and you are you you have again the same because. Uh, it repeats it until until it's it's the same value. So when you are using an, uh, when there is one point that is clipped, that it it does again because it's recurrent for the. I see. I see. Yeah, it's it's this is just uh, usually I don't plot all the all this because it's very long. I just did it just to to show uh, how 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 the calculations are 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 performed. In each case, so here the, this separation marks uh, the difference between the objects, and here you have everything mm -hmm. the same for all the objects for all the mm -hmm. filters separated. Um, okay. In in that case, uh, in that case, we in this case we we decided to to do everything with uh, using the, the the filter separately because. Uh, the the behavior in in the objects is very different depending on the filter. So in that case, we have we can have also some information about which is the variability in the different filters. Uh, as I was saying before, here, which probably we don't have enough points to 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 have uh, to to have a a good description of the structure function. So now I will I will uh, compare these values, for example, I, the, the, these outputs with the with outputs I have with our data, which are much more complete. And and in that case, you can observe all the all the structure function shape. Uh, but as an exercise, it's it's useful and also it, it tells us that we need more data <laughs> here. And I think that it can be useful uh, to to have this automated automatic automatized process to. To apply when when we will have all the Rubin data available, and um, so here I plot everything. So I will I'm not going to, to go explaining everything. I just wanted to to show you a, a, an example of how is this applied and how it looks like because the time is finishing. But I just want to to, to quickly show you the 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 application to the two examples of variable stars that 
that uh, that we uh, we uploaded here. So you should have in your folder uh, these two files, which uh, which are which are the the data for. I we, we have a lot of more data, but I just selected one for each case. So I selected one for this. Uh, young cellular objects in, in this cluster, which is one sixty three, and I selected one example for an XOR star. And uh, I will read these files. I again do the data summary, calling again the function. And as you can see here, we have only few data in, in these bands, but we have a, a, a good amount of data in GNR and an R, so we can perform the calculations correctly. And um, now what, uh, what I do is for each, uh, for each filter, I calculate uh, for this object, the structure function. I perform the structure function analysis. So I'm using here, uh, I'm only changing this default value that on the plots I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, I'm plotting everything that has more than every bin that had that, uh, every point of the structure function that is coming from a bin with more than Five points, um, and this is the, the the light curve. I'm I'm. This is again all the output of the calculations, and uh, which is more interesting to show is that this is the light curve I'm using here. So we have the data distributed mainly in this area. We these data are distributed along a, um, a longer time than the data we have we have in the DP zero catalogs because in DP zero two. The, the total simulated data should be five years, if, if I'm correct. And, but here we have like 10 years data. And uh, this is the structure function. So here in the, especially in the, in the R band, uh, we can see how here we have the, the noise in this area. And this is the change, the slight change in the, in the power law. And here we have this data, which has a little bit lower value uh, higher value also in g so we can we can we can uh, see which is the characteristic value which would be here when it changes from from this from to, to this one and i would the same which is even more clear in the in the in this data for this um, for this uh, uh, xor uh, star and as you can see here, we have a lot of points, which is great for our calculations. And we have a good distribution of points and we have a lot of points in this case. The bands are, are different as you can see, but I just want to show as a sample that here we, we, we can see clearly the, the theoretical distribution. I, I, have, I have explained at the beginning where we have, uh, here I'm using given the, the, the default values here, uh, which which are uh, two hundred for ten step and uh, and more than 10, 10 for the n, and we can see that we have here the points that tell us that which is the level of the of the noise in the data here, and we can see how we have the power law here and we and and we have the. the Again, the, the the flat value here. So it is is just like the the theoretical example that that they have shown before. Uh, I here stopped in the in the in the notebook, like doing only the calculations. But of course, the 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 next step for for this data uh, will be. Uh, to in order to continue exploring the data to experiment with uh, you can experiment with ways to select the variable objects in the catalog so as in, as i did in the in the section two you can try to apply the sector functionalities to other variable objects you can also explore how the the the, the parameter special vdn step uh, input parameter changes the results of the sector function because you should find an in a step which can show you the shape of the structure function without losing data, but but without exceeding your your end step, because if you put a very high end step, you you will get more noise and and the calculation will be slower, so it's not useful. And uh, finally, which 
I, we are also doing for our data now, uh, which I'm not presenting here, but hope we will have some results in the future, is to stack the characteristic statistical values for this, um, for the structure function calculated here. So in our case, we have a, a huge amount of, of structure functions as output because we have applied this method to a lot of stars. And we, what uh, we are trying to do is implement a method that can uh, automatically extract the, the statistical values that are representative for the for the um, for the time variability time scales that that you can find for each object, which uh, in the future will be very useful when we will have the Rubin data because because we will we could automatically search in the in the database for for the type of variable youngster objects that that we want to study. And uh, I think that that's all because I used all my time. So I was able to, to back uh, along all the notebook. I, maybe I did some, some steps very fast because of the time, but if you have any question on now or in the next hour, I'm, I'm available. Well, thank you very much, Sabina, for a really wonderful presentation. I think it was very clear to me personally. Uh, and mm -hmm. this is a good time if anybody has any questions to ask and uh, and then maybe we can go into breakout rooms to, to sort of have more informal discussion. So please go ahead, raise your hand or maybe even speak up or write in chat if you have any questions. Um, Nevin, you raise your hand. Yeah, I could ask many questions. So, uh, uh, so I, I worked on AGM science, which obviously uses structural functions for many years. And the reason why we use structure function there is because AGNs are stochastic objects, and then you want to combine many objects in order to extract the tendencies between the populations instead of the stochastic signal. But that's not the problem that you have. And I'm wondering why is this preferable than using standard power spectrum analysis? The reason why we don't do it in AGNs is because you can't combine or we don't know how to combine data in Fourier space. And you can relatively easily combine it in time domain space. But that's not the case that you have, right? That's what's mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, because it's different. Actually, I don't know the, the answer to this question. And I'm I'm not an expert in this because I started to work in on this like the last year, but Got maybe La maybe Laura Venuti can I will check that paper. Okay. Because I, Laura Venuti should be here. I don't know if uh, if, if she can add something because uh, okay. really in our in our group, Laura Venuti is the expert on the on the application of structure functions. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason why we uh, want to use the structure function or other methods like this is that uh, among young stellar objects, uh, especially the ones that have, that uh, are younger, they are, that are uh, surrounded by uh, more active disks, so they're undergoing significant amount of mass accretion from the disk, uh, can exhibit a pattern of variability which is very stochastic. So we want to uh, develop a, a unified framework to, to identify the characteristic timescales of variability even for those stars that are not periodic, for which we cannot conduct the analysis in, in Fourier domain. Okay, let's Jeff ask and then maybe we can. Go ahead, Jeff. You have a question. Oh, I was just going to ask. Um, it, it seems like mapping the um, mapping the structure function requires having um, data at a lot of a, a wide range of cadences. So, have you checked out the um, the you know the OPSIM um, simulated survey strategies? To confirm that the you know the proposed cadences for the actual LSST survey will sample enough of a variety of time scales to do the structure function analysis. Well, we didn't check. Uh, no, we didn't check with the data for the structure functions. We checked like for some some examples because when we were working on the uh, as part of the also the the the, the simulation math team that uh, that Sarah and Laura were were also part of, uh, we checked for the for some example of like curves, uh, typical examples of like curves we had for 
uh, for our science cases and we we checked which kind of cadence uh, is the one that can uh, that can um, reproduce the variability we in general observe in, in young stellar variabilities but did, we have not checked uh, the, the how the structure functions method yeah that's a good question yes because we have not checked how which is the, the exact distribution that, that that we need. I don't know if Laura, Laura if, if, if in, in its analysis, because Laura already applied this method in his paper. So I don't know if if if, if she if she was able to, to to say something about which kind of cadence you you need. Um, but yeah, that's something interesting to to, to, to also think about. Because uh, because of course we we need a, a specific cadence in general to to to, to being able to reproduce our uh, our data and also it changes depending on on the type of stars we have because in some of the stars for example the the stars that uh, that uh, Laura Venuti uh, was studying in 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 the catalog uh, uh, the, the the first example I have shown here. Um, they show shorter time variability, for example. While, for example, the XOR uh, variability, uh, it shows a variability in much longer time scales, like uh, not minutes, more years. And uh, one one thing that was also interesting for us is uh, is is to see uh, if we can say something about the shorter time scales, for example, for the source. So to see if uh, if we know that there is variability at longer time scale, but is there something that we are missing at shorter time scales? So this method is quite general, and uh, yeah, it would be also interesting to to match it for with the with the with the observing strategy in in some kind of uh, of way as you are asking. So yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Um, Ryan, how about if you ask your question and then Nevin is next? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so, yeah, so I'm pretty new to using or looking at structure functions. And so I'm just wondering um, how exactly to interpret that plot that you have, like above there for the uh, 2492. Um, I think I, I think I understand that it's like it's probing the different variability timescales, but I'm just trying to, yeah, like wrap my head around how the light curve corresponds to that particular um, plot there. like. Like why is it rising in that particular way? Is it that the there's yeah, because, more uh, variability at longer time scales? Yeah, I, I'm working now in the analysis. So maybe if, if Laura wants to say some words about this because he she already did this analysis. Uh, sure. So essentially what you're seeing is um the typical so the a measure of the average amplitude of variability extracted from the light curve across all. Uh, pairs of points uh, of data points in the light curve that are separated in time by the amount the time scale tau that is shown uh, on the x axis. So uh, as you move from uh, shorter time scales to longer time scales, as Sabina said at the beginning, what you expect to see um, on very short time scales when the intrinsic variability has not yet emerged is that uh, you have a flat uh, uh, amplitude of variability, which is essentially driven by by stochastic by photometric noise. Uh, then uh, there will be a certain time scale where the intrinsic variability of the of the star starts emerging from this photometric noise, and that's where the uh, uh, the uh, power law starts. And so, uh, as you sample longer time scales, what you expect to see is that uh, the measured amplitude of variability keeps increasing until you reach the characteristic time scale of variability in the light curve. So, beyond this time scale, what you expect to see is that you essentially when you pair to any two points in the light curve, you are sampling some fraction of the intrinsic variability on shorter time scales, right? Because you have already uh, you, have, you already moved beyond the maximum amount of variability, the maximum variability amplitude. So that's why you have this this knee in the uh, structure function, and uh, and what you observe at longer time scales, uh, the longer time scales is essentially flat behavior or an, uh, an oscillating behavior around this maximum amplitude. I see. So when you reach kind of that that plateau, that's around where the I don't know, characteristic. Yeah, that's essentially ex essentially this this transition time scale is uh -huh. the intrinsic time scale of, of variability for the star. 
And uh, so for, 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 example, for example, for young stars that are periodic, so for, where the variability is essentially dominated by uh, spot modulation, for instance, uh, there is a pretty tight correlation between this time scale of variability and the intrinsic rotation, rotation time scale, like the, the rotation rate. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one one uh, important parameter. Th this is, I, I mean, the most important parameter we, we have to, to extract in our future analysis. So we need to make a fit to 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 fit this uh, this area with the power law, and this this part with the with the part flat, and we have to uh, to calculate uh, the the change point because here we can see for one case we can see it directly in the image, but we we want to do this automatically for all the 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 data we have in our catalog to start the, the, the new point that Laura was talking about. All right, I see Nevin raised his hand again, so go ahead, Nevin. All right, so the last point. Uh, so actually, the Drew who was giving the link talk yesterday, we have been working on implementing structure function within link framework. So because it is a little bit funny that it's such a function which is so often used, but there is no package containing it. Yeah. Having said that, our goal is a little bit different in a sense that we would like to be able to analyze, let's say, all AGNs, you know, in a short amount of time, which means, you know, hundreds of thousands. Uh, so it's a it's a somewhat different, but similar. And I will definitely uh, forward your presentation to, to Drew. And uh, let's let, I always try to keep in touch because this is obviously very similar and I wasn't aware that uh, anybody in the star community would use structure functions. So it's very interesting. I'll try yeah. to keep in touch. Yeah, this is uh, that we wanted to to to, to make it uh, uh, with the, the rest of the communities because we know that this method is applied in, 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 in very different scientific cases. So yeah, we probably, uh, we don't have the, the, the same scientific uh, goals, but uh, we share the same method, but probably so we can Well, it's a that. little bit interesting because when you mentioned stochastic, like I understand, understand it is very, it's similar. It's not that, yeah, it's interestingly similar. Okay, interesting. All right, I don't see any more hands raised or any more notes in the chat window. So maybe we should thank uh, um, Sabina again. Thank you very much. This went so well and, and it's very appreciated. And, and needless to say, I certainly will dig into some of those details because I'm also interested in variability using structure function as well. So thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, perhaps we can actually uh, ask Sabina to stop sharing the screen and we can set up some yeah. uh, breakout rooms if anybody would like to uh, have anything specific. So please go ahead and raise your hand uh, if you would like me to set up a breakout room, but at least one of them will be maybe for follow up to, to maybe more de de uh, detailed questions to Sabina. So uh, um, any, any interest in breakout rooms? Yeah, okay. Uh, Bob, you would like one extra one, additional one? Uh, white dwarfs, please. Okay, sure. Anybody else? So maybe for time being, I will set up one, uh, uh, one for variability and one for white dwarfs, and then uh, people can join in if you wish to do that. And if, I will personally stay in the main room just in case if there's anything else that came up. So let me uh, uh, let me just uh, let participants choose their own rooms. There will be three breakout rooms. One of them I will call um, Sabina follow up. Second one I will call White Dwarfs, and the third one will be Spare. Is that okay? Great. <laughs>